This is one of the resources of Leaves of Autumn Ministries Loam. For more contents like this, call plus 234-7060701805. Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you back to this Reformation series. My name is Isisa Dixon, and I thank Loam for giving me this opportunity to take the lead for tonight's presentation. Now, before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and glorify your holy name for giving us the opportunity to be here to study once more about the faith of our fathers. Lord, even as we study, we pray that that fire that burns so brightly in them be rekindled within us, that we may carry on the reformation they started. For indeed, the bad thing has been passed on to us. Give us the grace, dear Lord, for we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening once more, everyone. Without any delay, we are going to move into tonight's presentation. And tonight, we are considering the French Reformation. And under this topic, we are focusing on John Calvin, the life of John Calvin. And I consider John Calvin one of the ablest of the reformers. Now, these are the things that we are going to learn about Calvin tonight. Number one, his brief history. Number two, his conversion. Number three, his sacrifices. Number four, his contributions. Number five, the lesson we can draw from his life and how we can apply them to our own lives today. So these are some of the things that we are going to learn about Calvin tonight. So let's stick around as we delve into them. Now, talking about the brief history of John Calvin, we are told that he was born on July 10, 1509, in a place called Noyon in France. He was a prominent figure in the Protestant Reformation and a key figure in the development of the theological system known as Calvinism. And I believe some of us are aware of that system of teaching. He is widely regarded as one of the most influential theologians and religious leaders of all time. Calvin was raised in a devout Roman Catholic family and initially studied law at the University of Orleans. But because of the growing influence of the Protestant movement and the works of Martin Luther, he ultimately broke away from Catholicism and embraced the Reformation. Now, in 1536, Calvin published his most famous work, Institutes of the Christian Religion, which laid out his theological doctrines. It emphasized the sovereignty of God, predestination, and the authority of Scripture. Calvin's ideas gained significant influence in Geneva, Switzerland, where he was invited by the city council to implement his reforms. And under Calvin's leadership, Geneva became a center for Reformation theology and a refuge for Protestants fleeing persecution in other areas of Europe. Many reform leaders such as John Knox were influenced by Calvin's teachings and carried them to other parts of Europe and beyond. John Calvin died on May 27, 1564, leaving behind a rich theological legacy and a lasting impact on Protestant Christianity. His teachings continue to shape the beliefs and practices of Reformed churches worldwide. Having said that, we now come to the conversion of John Calvin. Many circumstances actually led to his conversion. And one of those circumstances is that Calvin and his Protestant cousin used to meet to discuss matters disturbing Christendom. In one of those meetings, his cousin said to him, There are but two religions in the world. The one class of religions are those which men have invented, in all of which man saves himself by ceremonies and good works. The other is that one religion which is revealed in the Bible, and which teaches men to look for salvation solely to the free grace of God. When Calvin heard that, he said to his cousin, I will have none of your new doctrines. Thank you that I have lived in error all my days. Although Calvin tried to dismiss his cousin, conviction had been awakened in his mind. He 
he couldn't put away. This is one of the resources of Leaves of Autumn Ministries Loam. For more contents like this, call plus 234-7060701805. Good evening everyone. I want to welcome you back to this reformation series. My name is Cesar Dixon. has a passed on to us. Give us the grace, dear Lord, for we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening once more, everyone. Without any delay, we are going to move into tonight's presentation. And tonight, we are considering the French Reformation. And under this topic, we are focusing on John Calvin, the life of John Calvin. And I consider John Calvin one of the ablest of the reformers. Now, these are the things that we are going to learn about Calvin tonight. Number one, his brief history. Number two, his conversion. Number three, his sacrifices. Number four, his contributions. Number five, the lesson we can draw from his life and how we can apply them to our own lives today. So these are some of the things that we are going to learn about Calvin tonight. So let's stick around as we delve into them. Now, talking about the brief history, his theological doctrines. It emphasized the sovereignty of God, predestination, and the authority of Scripture. Calvin's ideas gained significant influence in Geneva, Switzerland, where he was invited by the city council to implement his reforms. And under Calvin's leadership, Geneva became a center for Reformation theology and a refuge for Protestants fleeing persecution in other areas of Europe. Many Reformed leaders such as John Knox were influenced by Calvin's teachings and carried them to other parts of Europe and beyond. John Calvin died on May 27, 1564, leaving behind a rich theological legacy and a lasting impact Protestant Christianity. His teachings continue to shape the beliefs and practices of Reformed churches worldwide. Having said that, we now come to the conversion of John Calvin. Many circumstances actually led to his conversion, and one of those circumstances is that Calvin and his Protestant cousin used to meet to discuss matters disturbing Christendom. In one of those meetings, his cousin said to him, There are but two religions in the world. The one class of religions are those which men have invented, in all of which man saves himself by ceremonies and good works. The other is that one religion which is revealed in the Bible, and which teaches men to look for salvation solely to the free grace of God. When Calvin heard that, he said to his cousin, I will have none of your new doctrines. Think you that I have lived in error all my days? Although Calvin tried to dismiss his cousin, 
Conviction had been awakened in his mind. He couldn't put away. This is one of the resources of Leaves of Autumn Ministries Loam. For more contents like this, call plus 234-7060701805. Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you back to this Reformation series. My name is Isisa Dixon, and I thank Loam for giving me this opportunity to take the lead for tonight's presentation. Now, before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and glorify your holy name for giving us the opportunity to be here to study once more about the faith of our fathers. Lord, even as we study, we pray that that fire that burns so brightly in them be rekindled within us, that we may carry on the reformation they started. For indeed, the bad thing has been passed on to us. Give us the grace, dear Lord. For we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening once more, everyone. Without any delay, we are going to move into tonight's presentation. And tonight, we are considering the French Reformation. And under this topic, we are focusing on John Calvin, the life of John Calvin. And I consider John Calvin one of the ablest of the reformers. Now, these are the things that we are going to learn about Calvin tonight. Number one, his brief history. Number two, his conversion. Number three, his sacrifices. Number four, his contributions. Number five, the lesson we can draw from his life and how we can apply them to our own lives today. So these are some of the things that we are going to learn about Calvin tonight. So let's stick around as we delve into them. Secondly, why Calvin was still under conviction because of his cousin's insistence that salvation is by free grace. Calvin witnessed the burning of a heretic, in quote, The firmness and peace that the matter showed convinced Calvin that his protestants had something he didn't have. He contrasted the matter's resolution and peace with his own despair and darkness, despite his own obedience to the church. He knew that these protestants rested their faith in the Bible, and this led Calvin to the study of the Bible. Now, in the Bible, Calvin found Christ and exclaimed, O oh Father, his sacrifice has appeased thy wrath. His blood has washed away my impurities. His cross has borne my curse. His death has atoned for me. We have devised for ourselves many useless follies, but thou hast placed thy word before me like a torch, and thou hast touched my heart in order that I may hold in abomination all other merits save those of Jesus. These circumstances and the influence of Luther's work led to the conversion of John Calvin. Now, coming to Calvin's sacrifices, John Calvin actually made a lot of sacrifices, and I'm going to mention some of them. 1. John Calvin led a simple and economical lifestyle, shunning personal luxuries and material possessions. He embraced a life of austerity, choosing to live in modest accommodations and dedicating his resources to the fortress of his religious work. 2. Calvin chose to remain unmarried for most of his life in order to fully devote himself to his theological pursuits. He believed that celibacy allowed him to focus solely on his mission and spare him time from the potential distractions and responsibilities that come with family life. Number three, Calvin faced significant opposition and threats to his safety due to his theological ideas. Despite the risk, he continued to champion his beliefs and lead the Protestant Reformation. He even endured exile and persecution, particularly in Catholic regions. 4. Calvin sacrificed a potential legal career to follow his religious calling. He could have pursued a prestigious path in law, but instead chose to dedicate his intellectual prowess to the study of theology and reforming the Christian church. Number five, Calvin devoted countless hours to writing 
and publishing theological works, as well as leading the Reformation movement in Geneva. This commitment meant sacrificing personal leisure time and rest, as he tirelessly worked to spread his ideas and support the growth of his religious community. Now, these sacrifices demonstrate Calvin's unwavering commitment to his religious beliefs and his willingness to endure personal hardship for the sake of what he believed to be the truth. His sacrifices played a significant role in shaping the theology and religious landscape of Protestantism. Now the question to you is, what sacrifice are you making for Christ? Now, coming to Calvin's contribution to Christianity, John Calvin actually made a lot of contributions to Christianity, but here I'm going to give us few. One, Calvin developed a comprehensive system of Christian theology known as the Calvinist theology. His work, Institutes of the Christian Religion, provided a detailed framework for understanding God, the Bible, and the Christian life. Two, Calvin's teaching on predestination, the belief that God has predetermined some individuals for salvation, generated debate and became a distinctive feature of Reformed theology. Number three, Calvin played a key role in the establishment of a Reformed church in Geneva, Switzerland. He implemented reforms such as systematic preaching, church discipline, and the establishment of a governing body to oversee the church. 4. Calvin, like other reformers, emphasized that salvation is attained through faith in Jesus Christ alone and not by human effort or good works. Number 5. John Calvin had a profound influence on Christian worship, promoting simplicity, congregational singing of psalms, and the centrality of the scripture in worship services. These contributions by John Calvin significantly impacted Christian theology, church structure, and worship practices, and his teachings continue to shape Protestantism to this day. Now, what are the lessons we can learn from the life of John Calvin, and how can we apply them to our own lives today? Number one, John Calvin was known for his strong commitment to his religious beliefs and principles. He stood firm in his convictions and dedicated his life to promoting the ideas of the Protestant Reformation. We can apply this lesson by identifying our own values and beliefs and committing our lives to live by them even in the face of challenges or opposition. Two. Calvin was a learned theologian who continually sought to deepen his understanding of religious teachings. He emphasized the importance of studying and interpreting the Bible. We can follow his example by nurturing a curious and open mind, engaging in lifelong learning and seeking knowledge in areas that interest us. Number three, Calvin was renowned for his discipline and work ethic. He was known to have a rigorous daily routine, dedicating several hours to studying, writing, and ministering to his congregation. We can apply this lesson by cultivating discipline and diligence in our own lives, setting goals, managing our time effectively, and committing to personal and professional growth. Four. Calvin believed in the importance of using one's talents and resources to benefit others. He established a system of church governance and worked to improve the welfare of the community. We can apply this lesson by recognizing our responsibility to society, seeking ways to serve others, and using our skills and resources for the betterment of our communities. Number five, Calvin believed in the importance of unity and collaboration among Protestants, even in the midst of theological differences. He advocated for religious tolerance and believed 
in the inclusivity of the Christian faith. We can apply these lessons by embracing diversity, fostering tolerance and understanding, and promoting unity among different individuals and communities, regardless of their beliefs or backgrounds. Number six, Calvin's influence extended far beyond his lifetime. His theological and intellectual contributions continue to shape Protestant theology today. We can apply this lesson by considering the legacy we want to leave behind, whether it's through our work, personal relationships, or contributions to society. We can strive to make a positive impact in the lives of others and leave a lasting legacy through our actions and values. Now, by reflecting on these lessons and incorporating them into our own lives, we can draw inspiration from John Calvin's legacy and apply it to our own modern day circumstances. I pray that God will give us the grace to do this. In Jesus' name, Amen. I want to welcome every one of us back from that presentation. And I believe somebody has been blessed. In case you have any question or concern, you can drop it on the platform and we will respond to it. God bless you. Before we go, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the grace and the strength to study tonight. Give us the grace to digest what we have learned. And above all, help us to carry the reformation forward that is started. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is one of the resources of Leaves of Autumn Ministries Loam. For more contents like this, call plus 234-7060701805.